Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkian Wiersma. I'm an orchid grower from the Netherlands. So yes, you guys, we have another care collab. And I think it's been a year or two that we uh, did a care collab for the last time. So I'm really happy that uh, I did receive an email from Nina again from uh, Ninja Orchid that she uh, did, uh, was uh, planning a care collab again. And today we're going to talk about uh, the slipper orchids. And I think, uh, well, first of all, they are very fun to watch because we do get a lot of uh, different tips from different growers uh, on how to grow these uh, beauties. And also it's a very nice way to actually sort of meet new uh, orchid growers here on YouTube to discover new channels, which I think it's uh, pretty fun. So uh, that's an extra bonus for me. And speaking of different uh, channels, uh, I'm going to step out of the way a little bit so I can introduce to you guys uh, the uh, participants for today's uh, Care Collab. So let's start uh, with them. And first we do have Hello Plant Lovers, then we have Ed's Orchids, Karen's Orchids, Hillbilly Orchids, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, Matt by Nature, Trish Orchid Life, Tropical Plants Finland, Simply Orchids etc, Orchids by the Lake, Mary G Orchids and more, Beauty of Orchids and Plants, DD Blooms or DG Blooms, Danielle's Orchid Ranch, The Right Pep, Joy's Orchids, Tuki World, Julie's Orchids, and of course uh, Nina from Ninja Orchids and I uh, will also have their links in the video description so I, pre I would suggest to check them out and like I said it's uh, it's very nice to uh, meet new people there goes my backdrop <laughs> to new uh, meet new uh, peoples here on Facebook, uh, Facebook on uh, YouTube of course and um, yeah, like I said, a lot of uh, different tips. Before I forget, and I don't want to forget, is that if you are on social media as well, and you didn't already have, but you want to enjoy in these care collabs, you can. So it's very easy. You can leave a comment on the, uh, need, uh, one of the videos you will see today. And uh, let, just let us know you want to join in and uh, we uh, should make that happen. So that's something I didn't want to forget. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you where I do grow my uh, slipper orchids. So the Prachman Pediums, I only have one of them, but it's fairly big. So it covers up for, uh, for, the, for the rest that I don't have, I think. <laughs> and I have, let me speak, five uh, Pafio Pediums. They are uh, over there. So first I'm going to uh, let uh, to show you uh, where do I uh, grow them? And I'm going to talk a bit, bit about the light levels. So in here are um, my uh, slipper orchids. We see here on the right the Puffio Pedlums in a row. And I have my Pragmopidium over here. As you can see, it's a fairly large plant. And I put it here. It was sitting over there as well with the paths. But I thought I'm going to put it here so it's a little bit closer to a window and maybe that will help spiking the plant. And as we just saw and still can see is that it is spiking, but I'm not really sure if it needed that much more light. I think I needed to be a little bit more patient and the new growth needed to mature a little bit more. But anyhow, um, it, it does get a little bit more light than the Puffio Pedlums as you can see. Um, and it also is a little bit more fitting uh, before, uh, because of the leaves, as you can see, they are really are bending over. So they are not touching uh, the shelves as much. They can go over. Let me uh, show it to you a little bit better. As you can see here, so we have a little bit more room because this has quite a size to it. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. That's, uh, but that's why uh, this Pafio Pedlum um, Pragmapidium, I'm sorry, <laughs> is living over here. And it has in front of it a LED light that is cool white. And I should have, yeah, I will have a, uh, my links of my equipment in the video description as well, if you want to check it out. A ceiling fan, as you can see, very close to it. And no, it's not touching the spike, but I need to keep an eye on it <laughs> if I do grow spikes, because yeah, we don't want to let it go into the fan of course 
But anyhow, it does like a, a little bit of fresh air, a little bit of air movement. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the spikes are just, just of the blooms are a little bit moving. So I think that's uh, also very beneficial. And as we just saw over here, I have my Buffio petalums. And those are a little bit closer to that uh, LED light as well because they do not or barely get any um, daylight. In summer I have more light coming in, so I will have a little bit of daylight here, but I found that these do not need as much light. And as you can see, they're still blooming, so they uh, do receive en enough light to uh, put up the spikes. But this is a little bit uh, of an idea of where they live in my orchid room. So uh, I'm going to grab them one by one so we can have a closer look at them. And, and yeah, I already have this one, uh, this beauty on, uh, on the table, on my potting table. So why not start with this one? This uh, actually has a name. So if you like it, whoops, sorry for the glare. This is the name you want to look for. And let me give you a close-up of the blooms. I hope it will succeed if I do it like this because I'm going to shake them a little bit but look at these beauties it's a bit of yellow greenish color in there and some dark red spots markings on there so yeah beautiful beautiful blooms if you ask me so yeah did take a little bit of time to let this bloom but uh, like I said, <laughs> I think I did need to be a little bit more patient. <laughs> but uh, because he has quite some uh, new growth and you can recognize the new growth on the lighter color of the leaves. I hope you can see it here. And as you probably know or not, but I do grow my orchids uh, semi hydroponically. Well, actually self-watering if you wanna be uh, completely correct. <laughs> well, actually it's a little bit in between, I think. But, um, and I will have a, whoops, there goes the stake of the spike. I couldn't get it in uh, inside of the pot. And this is why, because it's covered in uh, roots and it's already drunk her water. So I need to water it again. And I have a dead leaf there. It's a bit in the way, but you can see so, so many roots even coming underneath of that pot. So yeah, this one obviously likes the setup, but yeah, you can imagine I couldn't get this stake in. <laughs> so I have it next to it in, uh, in the, uh, between the inner pot and the outer pot. And just right next to the stake, we see some new uh, roots. But yeah, this one is, it took off straight away. I have it now for over a year, I think. And it just took off. I just did repot it in this setup. And like I said, it just grew on. I like see, uh, like never ever uh, anything had happened. And as you can see, it's quite a size. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I may have more spikes to come, but once again, I think those new growths need to be uh, a little bit more mature. So, and you saw probably that I do, did grow it in pumice. Pumice is my most favorite uh, orchid in organic media, orchid uh, growing media, I should say. So yeah, I really love the pumice and apparently, uh, apparently see those as well because yeah, it's growing uh, incredibly well for me. So uh, yeah, this is my Pragmopedium and I'm going to talk about the, uh, the feed levels as well. I have a video on the, the feed that I use. I will probably uh, somewhere put it in here and I also have an, a more in-depth video on my growing system. I, I call it my customized cell watering system. So I will have somewhere a pop-up as well if you want to go more into detail on how I take care of the orchids in cell watering. But because uh, I don't want to make this video way too long, so I'm going to leave it uh, at that video. So now it's time to uh, grab the uh, Puffio Pedalums. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I'm always confusing them with Pragmapidium and Paphiopedalums. Well, I try my best. This is a Pragmapidium. Now we're going to look at the uh, Paphiopedalums. Yes, there we go. <laughs> so I'm going to start uh, with one, uh, the, the oldest one that I have. This is the Paphiopedalum uh, Blackjack. And it started to uh, get quite a size to it. You see here the new growth 
over there and I do not see any spikes coming yet but it probably will start spiking uh, in the upcoming two three months I'm not completely sure but I really like the volutes on it volutes I should say that pro beautiful uh, marked leaves with that purplish color in there as well combined with a dark green which I think it's probably uh, a very very uh, probably it's a very nice combination so um, I'm going to have a look at the inside of the pot as well just to see how she is doing and I have some Cintiq in here and you can see there are some roots this one doesn't make as much roots as the Brahmapidium but still it does look uh, pretty fine and the rest is small whoops i hope you can see it sorry small pumice and i grow this one in this setup for at least yeah from 2018 i have the dates on here but i had it before that as uh, already so i did grow it in inorganic media i'm uh, sorry in uh, organic media as well so i have it for quite some years now and two directions of growth as far as you can see, yes, did lead in two new growths here and another new growth here, I'm sorry. So I have now three new growths, which is pretty awesome, I think. Very nice dark reddish blooms this one, uh, this one gives. So that's the first one. And then um, not long after I bought the Black Tech, I bought this American Beauty, American Hybrid, Puffier Petalum American Hybrid. Um, so this one I have put it up also in 2018 there we go and it's now working on one two three at least four new growths so it looks like it's happy uh, happy in there as well but we shall have a look I need to put it down otherwise I cannot take it out of the out of pot but here we go yeah, same situation. Cintiq with small pumice. And here we do see some roots. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it looks uh, looks like it's enjoying itself. I don't see roots coming underneath of that pot. But uh, yeah, and I bloom it every year. So this is even an old spike. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it, it, but the new growths are not mature enough yet. So, but it should uh, should bloom somewhere in the upcoming months, I believe. So let's uh, grab the other three that I have. So, and here are the other three. I'm going to start with this one. It's a beautiful, almost white one. It's a fairly large bloom if you compare it to my hand. And it's a no ID. So I have a, a I had a tag for it, but it's not completely white. It's a one of the parents so i, I uh, keep it as a no id now i cannot uh, really uh, be sure but i uh, am sure of that i really really like this one very very nice bloom and this one same story as the uh, pragmapidium i did repot it and it just took off it didn't skip any blooming it's also working as you can see on a new growth there and we just saw that beautiful spike and uh, let me check. Uh, I need to put it in my other hand so we can. Uh, yeah, here we go. This doesn't have the Cintiq in it anymore because I figured that it doesn't need the Cintiq. So, uh, and Cintiq holds a lot of water. And yeah, if it doesn't need it, I don't uh, don't use it because I don't want to create any uh, situation where I uh, do. Also kind of grow mold <laughs> if you don't have to. But uh, back in the days, I was uh, using the Cintiq uh, for not that long. So I basically was testing it. And I'm just noticing that I missed a new growth. I actually have two new growths. Anyhow, so, but I don't use Cintiq. It's the inorganic version of uh, moss, if you don't know it. But um, if I don't have to use it, I don't use it anymore. And I like to put a top layer of these black or grays pebbles on top of it i like the look of it and this helps with especially in summer to avoid a top dry layer 
because the water needs to wake from the reservoir up the way uh, all the way up to the top of the pot of course but in summer it, it doesn't compete with the heat so you will create it will create a uh, top dry layer but with putting uh, pebbles on top we avoid it the pebbles uh, keep the moisture in it uh, way better so therefore I uh, put pebbles on top of it and I learned this trick from Annabelle from the orchid room but uh, yeah I really like the look of it as well but the rest was uh, pumice small pumice and big pumice as you just saw and I mix it up here and there, like I said, sometimes with Cintiq or other medias, just to see uh, if it works, if something works better than the other. Because I like to know. This one, I uh, lost this tag, but I know this one. Same story as the other one, the white one. I just uh, repotted it in bloom and it's still the same spike. And this is a uh, Pinocchio, the Alba version. And I love the colors on this one. The shape of the bloom and I really uh, enjoy Albas the green yellow and white colors I love them but anyhow this one didn't give a uh, sign of stress when I put it in here it's also uh, working on this new growth here which is probably almost there it may uh, start a spike as well so let's have a look same story we have a uh, top layer of pebbles but let me check what I put it in probably also uh, something with pumice yeah pumice of course the big pumice in this case no small pumice and a little bit of Cintiq to compensate probably but anyhow you can see the roots on this this one is growing like crazy so this was for me to see if they do mind a little bit more of those air pockets in there or not and like I said, to compensate the leaving the small pumice out, I did use a bit of uh, Cintiq again. And this works wonders as well. This is also something I uh, noticed that my Zygopetalums do like as well. But this is also maybe a, an idea. So you can see I have only some big uh, air pockets there, but it's moist enough. So they keep on uh, growing and uh, blooming. So they do uh, wonderfully well in here. And then we have the last one, and that's what, fairly special. It doesn't have an ID, but I did uh, buy this one, one from uh, Miracle Orchids, Annabelle from Miracle Orchids, and she did get it from Miss Orchid Girl. So this one has been uh, in the several uh, setups on YouTube, <laughs> funny enough. And now it's here, and also doing fairly well. Look at those beautiful roots there, and again, just the pumice, uh, big pumice. Let me turn this around. I, I, it looks like I didn't even use the Cintiq in here. Once again, I like to mix it up a little bit. So we have where we are here. The, the root is fairly dark. I'm not sure if that is still alive or not, but we have a more fresher one. Oops, it's over there. <laughs> so yeah, checking, just checking and testing to see which uh, setup does work the best. But as you can see, it's uh, working on uh, roots, it's growing roots. And it certainly uh, looks like it's uh, loving this setup. And this one has a new growth here. This is still a new growth. And it also has a new growth over here. So again, in the upcoming months somewhere, I should have some spikes. I just checked it, but it didn't have. But look at the foliage. Isn't that beautiful? So yeah, typical, these orchids are fairly slow growers, but once they bloom, they are beautiful. And also I, uh, I'm going to adjust a little bit the camera settings. Um, I also enjoy the, the volley, it's beautiful. So yeah, even though if they are not in bloom, it still looks very, very pretty, I think. So, uh, Beautiful, beautiful plants to grow. They are, like I said, fairly slow growers, so I don't uh, have the, uh, the um, ambition to buy a lot of them. But yeah, at least we need a few slipper orchids in our uh, uh, collection, I think. <laughs> and it's really fun to grow them, don't get me wrong. Fertilizer-wise, it's the same. I give basically all my uh, orchids in self-watering the same uh, amount of fertilizer, with an exception of Venus. I don't have them in self-watering, but those get a lot more uh, feed these cymbidiums 
um, do get a little bit more feed, well quite a little bit more, they will get the vendor water and we have the catechetum types. So the rest of the plants do get the same amount of fertilizer because, because otherwise I would keep on mixing and mixing different amounts of feed and I'm not uh, looking forward to do that. So for this it's, uh, it's the same as the, as the rest, it's just fairly low. I am a strong believer of weekly, weekly. So I give them in a winter about 30 up to 50 parts per million on feed. And in summer, during summer, um, it's uh, between 50, uh, 80, sometimes 100, but not much. And that's why I did not, I'm not sure if you didn't, uh, or if you did notice, <laughs> I don't have any salt builds up. I keep it low and I don't think they need a heck of a lot of feed orchids as long as you have feed in there. And because this is a uh, self-watering setup, there's always a little bit of feed there for the orchids to, uh, to, to uh, take up if they want to. So I'm looking uh, at, at this as a basically a sort of uh, buffet actually, a little bit of buffet. So there's a little bit of different fertilizers in there and they can take what, uh, what they want. So that's, uh, that's my uh, philosophy behind this uh, growing setup. And for me, it works wonders, absolutely wonders. They look really, really healthy, really nice shining leaves, and I don't flush them. So uh, I need to, uh, I, I'm compensating basically. And I uh, have a look uh, as you maybe you did check, or you're going to check my customized, customized cell watering uh, setup video but you will uh, have it more in details. But I do check my pH and parts per million on, on uh, about three up to six months. I just check it and see how it does go because if you don't flush, you will end up with a lower pH, a too low pH. So keep an eye on that. But if you have a nice balance, uh, they should do well. I do not have one of these orchids that I'm uh, concerned about. As we just saw, they, they have their roots, they're growing, they're blooming, they're doing their thing. Just be uh, be patient. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. But my, at least my Pracopidium is, is blooming. That was my goal and the rest will probably follow. <laughs> so I hope you did uh, get a quite a, uh, uh, an, a vision on how I grow these orchids, these slipper orchids. But still, of course, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. I don't mind to try to uh, uh, answer all the questions in the comments. And um, yeah, I, uh, if you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up. That would be really uh, helpful, of course. And for now, just thank you for watching. And I really uh, hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.